Hey everybody, welcome back to the Carrying Cut YouTube channel. And if you're new here, I sure do appreciate you stopping by and watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out our Instagram, at Carrying Cut, and our Patreon, at Carrying Cut. All the proceeds from the Patreon are going to go directly back into the channel to buy new equipment and new knives to hopefully make the quality and the content better for you guys. So today, we're going to be looking at a new company that I've never even... Well, I've heard of them before, but I've never um, seen or messed with or played with any of their knives before. And that is F and Grow. So definitely kind of a crazy name, but before we get into it, I want to give a huge shout out to Jimmy Crow. This is another one of his knives that he uh, sent on over and provided for us, provided us to do a uh, video, and do a review with, and uh, you know have some fun with, and hopefully share to you guys the audience. And uh, maybe it's something you guys want to pick up in the future. So this is a pretty incredible knife for the value and the price of it. It is uh, definitely pretty sweet. So this is the F and Grow EF223. And uh, this is a 19, this is a $20 knife, $19.99 on Amazon, if you can believe that. So it is a full-size knife. It comes in D2 steel. We have a nice stone wash blade, pretty much a full flat grind on it until we get to the swedge. It goes all the way out to the tip. So it really does, you know, reduce drag on it, and it really gets to a nice, fine, acute tip on it. So that is definitely pretty nice to see. We have G10 on the handles. This knife was originally a tan, like a coyote brown tan G10. And then Jimmy, he's a he's a knife nut for sure. He likes to uh, customize just about all the knives that he has. He does regrinds. He does a whole bunch of you know dye work. This is another knife that he dyed. So he uh, dyed these brown scales green, and then he used some 220 grit sandpaper to give it that pocket worn look. So it is definitely pretty sweet. Jimmy does an awesome job with all of his stuff, and uh, love to see all the crazy creations he comes up with, and a lot of his grill. You know stuff that he customizes he's a bench made bug out freak and he loves everything he has to do with bug outs and uh every single one of them that he owns he not, not a single one of them in stock anymore and he does some really cool stuff and he's a, just a you know awesome guy really good guy to deal with great friend to have and uh jimmy sure do appreciate all the help and all the support so let's go ahead and dive right into this thing like i was saying before this is a d2 blade they got a nice stone wash finish on it of course flipper we got ball bearings in the pivot um, G10 on the handle material, liner lock that has pretty good engagement, not too bad. It has a pretty good action. It's not really a deep carry pocket clip, you know, that much of it is going to be sticking out of your pocket. So keep that in mind if that is something that is a deal breaker for you. Um, it does have, you know, full liners. They're not nested, but they are definitely are. They got some material moved out of them on the inside to keep the weight down. If you guys can see that in there. So that's pretty nice. We got um, T8. On the pivot, it looks like T6 everywhere else. On the body screws, there's pretty minimal screws on this one. So that's nice to see. The D2 steel is definitely, hopefully it's pretty good stuff. It's, you know, the, the testing that I've done with it, it seems to hold up pretty well. Of course, I've nothing, I haven't done anything too crazy with it, but it has a very aggressive edge on it right now. So that's definitely nice to see. I don't know if Jimmy's done any sharpening on this one. I really haven't done anything crazy with it. I've just carried it around the house for a couple days. And, um, you know, overall, I'm impressed with it. I really do like the um, how high the flipper tab is <clears throat> in comparison with the pivot. And it's even a little bit above the pivot. So you have a whole bunch of leverage to flip that blade out. So the flipper works Flipper works excellent. And the action on this knife is pretty, pretty impressive. The one thing I might have to say, it's kind of a flaw for me. I don't really know. The flipper tab, you know, it's kind of doesn't really get in the way of the the liner lock but as soon as you start coming down on it it's not you know exactly shut it's not well disengaging all the way i guess you could say and that might just be something i'm doing wrong and you know there it goes right there it's not really falling down shut so you kind of have to get it going and then even further pass down so that's just a little bit of a a weird thing that i've noticed the more i've been playing with it so you just really got to make sure you have that liner all the way disengaged from the blade before you start you know closing it on there so doesn't require two hands, nothing crazy like that, but just definitely something to look out for. But for $19.99, this knife is, you can, you can't, you know, go wrong with it. You, know, you really can't complain about it either. You know, you always got to keep in mind what we're dealing with, the price point they're trying to get at, and how they're even able to get the prices down so low. I know we just looked at the Gonzo here a couple videos ago. That is another amazing knife for the price. And a lot of the stuff, you know, it just blows my mind that these companies are able to get these this quality of a product out for everybody for such a, you know, cheap price. I don't know what this would cost in America to be made. I'm guessing probably at least 150 
for having you know such a good action. I'm definitely not knocking anything made in the United States. I wish everything I had was made in the United States, but it's just not possible to do, especially for a budget like mine. You know, I don't have thousands of dollars, you know, at my dispense to be, you know, buying knife. So overall, definitely a great thing. Like to see it. And they have a whole bunch of different colors you can go with this one too. So that's definitely cool to see. They have coated blades, non-coated blades, all different colors of G10, and um, definitely awesome. So I don't know if you can find any other you know deep carry clips or anything like that and it's kind of hard where they have this last backspacer in there to uh, figure out exactly how they would even do a deep carry clip on there maybe they could get rid of this lanyard hole and then move the uh back the um, barrel spacer up to there and then they'd be able to move this clip farther up but you know that's uh for another thing i doubt they'll even see this video but that is just my two cents on something i would like to see personally i am not too big of a fan of lanyards anyway but my buddy steven weigel he is definitely um, a big fan of them, and uh, he lent me some uh, paracord, and uh, I might definitely going to give it a shot. I'm going to put a couple lanyards on some nice and see if I like them or not. So let's get some specs going here. We're looking at an overall length of right at about 8 inches on there. Blade length, we're looking at, it just depends on where you want to measure. If you're going to measure all here back at the flipper, it's over 4 inches. Right here, it's a sharpened edge of the blade. You're at little over three and a half so that keep that in mind too but if you're all the way at the front it's kind of this handle shape is very odd going on right here but it definitely does make for a pretty cool knife i'm getting kind of sidetracked here let's go ahead and get the get the scale out take a measurement well, not a measurement get a weight on it get uh this carrying cuts awesome kitchen scale here make sure we're zeroed out all right we're at 3.9 ounces so it's definitely i wouldn't even call that a heavy knife still i really can't feel it in the pocket especially when i'm just wearing jeans i like knives that have some heft to them so that is just um, you know i'm kind of partial to that don't really uh, mind the extra weight but these liners are super thick so this is going to be a durable durable knife i mean you guys can really tell that on camera but they are they're just about as thick as the actual handle scales are the g10 so that is you know awesome to see this is going to be a super Hard use, you could really get down dirty with this thing and not, you know, worry too much about it. Um, the ergonomics are pretty great, you know, pretty good on it. The, I have, a, I wouldn't say large hands, but I wear a large glove and I can fit four fingers on it, no problem at all. This is pretty much my favorite knife size. I like, I'm not too big on the real small ones, not too, you know, enthused about the super huge knives, but um, definitely pretty cool. I like the ergonomics, I like the blade shape. It's got a nice drop point blade on it. I don't think I mentioned that before also, but you have D2 steel, stone wash, and uh, that's gonna hide some scratches and all other sorts of stuff like that. Like I said, D2 is not a stainless steel, so keep that in mind when you are uh, using this knife. Just keep the blade cleaned off. You really shouldn't have any sort of issues with it. Let's do some size comparisons. How about with the uh, CVV button lock elementum? This is the actual, actual button lock one with no other uh, means to deploy the blade, so four of you coming up on this one here soon and uh, we are looking pretty much right in the same ballpark as that one pretty cool to see how about the Benchmade Osborne 940 so we're pretty much right in the same ballpark with that one also how about let's try out the Fair and Forge Designs Alluris that one is pretty similar the pivots don't really line up when you you know go pivot to pivot they're kind of the blade sticks out a little further on this one but they're definitely about the same size i don't know if too many of people have these and they're not um this is a awesome knife I sure do love this one let's do one more let's do our 500 subscriber giveaway knife this will be the practice button lock it is definitely going to be smaller than the practice button lock so keep that in mind when you guys are out looking to get one of these if you will i will have this link down in the description below but other than that i think uh i think that's all i got for this one you know i approve of it it's going to be a awesome slicer it's going to be you know cut through whatever materials you want to use it for cardboard amazon boxes an apple whatever you want to do whatever you use your pocket knife for this is going to be a really nice budget alternative you'll be able to throw it around thrash it around loan it to somebody and give it to your dad your brother uncle aunt whoever so definitely an awesome knife no real gripes with it other than the lock bar or not lock bar but the uh liner lock kind of i don't know having a weird weird way to not really deploy but actuate i guess you could say that's the word i'm looking for to get the knife closed so it's just something you have to be a little more methodical about and you know think about what you're doing 
but maybe if this is your first knife then you're not really gonna have to worry about it. it's gonna come second nature to you so other than that really do like it make sure to check it out in the description below I'll have a link down there and until uh, next time guys thanks